Welcome everyone. We are so glad to have so many of our friends and family and Kentucky leaders here to celebrate a building that is part of a more than half billion dollar transformation of the Martin Gatton College of Agriculture, Food and Environment. I'd like to recognize some guests who uh, we really appreciate being here. Our wonderful board of trustees, representatives are here. Um, state legislators are here. Representative Adriel Camuel, Representative Dan Fister, Representative Sherilyn Stevenson, Representative Ke Killian Kimini, Timoney, and last and far from least, our very good friend, Richard Heath. Um, also, um, Jay Hall is here from the Kentucky Department of Agriculture. We are very honored to be graced with our mayor, Linda Gorton, being here today to help us celebrate. We also have council member James Brown and council members Tanya Fogel, Hannah Legree, Shayla Lynch, and Kathy Plowman. We also have Erica Rogers from the mayor's office. We also appreciate those from the UK administration who are here, and we especially appreciate Mary Lynn Capaluto being here. Um, I think we'll count you in the administration, Mrs. Capaluto. Um, we have Provost Bob DePaula, Mark Birdwhistle from UK Healthcare, Jake Lemon from Philanthropy and Alumni Engagement. If I left anybody out, I'll invite you to the next bourbon tasting in the Rick House. <laughs> we are also very honored to have um, um, Eddie Melton here from Kentucky Farm Bureau. We, are, we, we also appreciate the presence of the Kentucky Cattlemen's Association. I believe I saw Dave Maples and Nikki Whitaker here earlier. Um, Sarah Coleman from the Kentucky Livestock Coalition and the Kentucky Horse Council. Matt Uliano from the Jockey Club. Um, distinguished alumni, Mike Ritchie and Bill Smith. The Alumni Association Board, we have members here. Our dear friend and colleague, Lisa Banner from Bean Suntory. Our architects um, from B. HDP and FLAD and Turner Construction and our wonderful treasured capital projects leader Angela Powell. I don't know if Kevin Locke is here or not, but we appreciate um, those at UK who help us daily through these issues regarding getting new buildings. And um, also wanted to recognize we have a lot of MG Cafe chairs and directors here today. Y'all would raise your hands. We also have a lot of staff here today, some of whom are going to be in these buildings, animal sciences, plant and, plant and soil sciences, entomology, horticulture, the plant diagnostic lab. They deserve special appreciation because they're going to have to put up with the parking situation they're going to deal with during construction and we, we want to think about them. We might have to invite them to the bourbon tasting in the Rick House too. <laughs> so I, as I said, I hope I haven't left anyone out. I think I, I did forget our wonderful alum, Jean Cravens is here, and um, Dr. Ashutosh Verma from our partner institution, Lincoln Memorial University is also here today. So let's welcome all these people. I now have the pleasure of work welcoming President Capaluto to the stage. He does not like long introductions, but I'm going to thank him for his support of the College of Ag and his coining the term of, for, and with Kentucky because we believe that speaks to so much of what we do. President Capaluto. This is another historic moment and day for the University of Kentucky. What I get to say often here is success has lots of mothers and fathers, and I so appreciate your recognizing all the individuals that are here with us today to celebrate, take pride in what we've done. You have our deepest gratitude. 
I particularly appreciate our elected representatives that are here from the governor's office, our legislative leaders. They understand deeply the importance of what a vibrant agricultural economy means for our state. And they have continuously and strategically invested in it. And speaking of mothers of success, Dean Nancy Cox. She serves as a leader in the college for more than 20 years. There's a reason she is so well known, so highly regarded, and I'll say so loved throughout the state and in the agricultural circles. These leaders know she is an expert, and even more importantly, they know she cares. As Dean Cox prepares to retire in the coming months, I want to thank her for all that she has done for Kentucky, for the Martin Gatton College of Agriculture, Food, and Environment. Dean and Vice President Cox, thank you. I can never be at an event like this today without speaking of someone who I hold dear in my heart, of blessed memory, Mr. Bill Gatt, whose historic investment in this college pretends a great future for the Commonwealth. Today we build upon the rich legacy, the history that this college and university holds dear as we celebrate the university's single largest investment in the College of Agriculture, Food, and Environment. Upon passage of the Morrell Act in 1862, President Lincoln said, the land-grant university system is being built on behalf of the people who have invested in these public universities, their hopes, their support, and their confidence. Today marks another investment in that legacy. A legacy marked by moments where we earn the support and confidence of our fellow Kentuckians through advancements in research that touch all parts of the Commonwealth and indeed the world. So here are just a few examples. No-till agriculture which is growing in popularity as a sustainable solution, pioneered by UK scientists at Princeton long ago. It illustrates powerfully our leading edge impact. Rapid response to mare reproduction loss syndrome in the early 2000s, and more recently to the novel equine rotavirus B outbreak. The creation of the James B. Beam Institute for Kentucky Spirits, critical to the innovation and workforce development, supporting another core economy in our state, and new research capacity in forage animal production aligned with a new federal lab coming online, which adds to our critical research capacity. So as we look to the future, it is important to recognize the college's longstanding tradition of advancing this commonwealth in everything they do. The Kentucky Experiment Station, the research enterprise of the college, was established in 1885. And then President James Patterson and two members of the Board of Trustees attended a meeting in Washington, D.C. There they discussed the need for scientific experimental agricultural research, what later became the Hatch Act of 1887. So it's a perfect time for me to recognize our trustees who are here today who continue in that same tradition. Thank you for being here. 
The first Kentucky Experiment Station had humble beginnings with a single room in the basement of the University Administration Building. It has now grown to encompass more than $40 million in annual research expenditure spread, spread all over the place. Let me name just a few. There's several laboratories, teaching spaces, and service programs on this campus. There are 19 research and support units, six research stations and farms across the state, a veterinary diagnostic lab, regulatory services enterprise, and 120 extension offices. The Martin Gatton College of Agriculture, Food, and Environment continues to be deeply tied to the needs of Kentucky's communities. The college works at the intersection of the disciplines in agriculture innovation, including the following, forage animals and forage systems, insect functional genomics, plant pathogen interaction, equine infectious diseases, and sustainable local food systems. That work is in addition to the following, family and community health and well-being, economic development, food is health initiatives, environmental sustainability, resilient food and fiber systems, animal infectious disease, plant and insect genomics, farmer stress and safety, and substance use disorders. It truly makes this Kentucky's College of Agriculture a place deeply committed to its people and their prosperity. So congratulations to all of you who made possible this day another historic and important milestone. And thanks to all of you, we can look forward to many more to come. Thank you. The next speaker is someone who has inspired me since I came to uh, Kentucky in 2001, Rocky Adkins, senior advisor to the governor, Andy Bashir, former House Majority Floor Leader, and longtime state representative. He's led on energy, agriculture, and economic development, and with a special emphasis on communities across the state. And together with the governor, they have led a massive effort to grow Kentucky's economy and build strong synergy between technology, commercialization, and agriculture at the heart of research innovation. Please help me welcome Senior Advisor Rocky Adkins. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let me first of all say I'm honored to be here today on behalf of the governor. And I'm honored to be here today on behalf of myself. To see this uh, transformational announcement, groundbreaking, has taken place here today. But Dr. Capilouto, before I do that, what a week for the University of Kentucky to really define who this university is, what its purpose is, and how it can reach out to make a difference for all regions of Kentucky, and especially some of those regions that need not a handout, but a hand up. We had an announcement this week in a place that I have spent a lot of my life, in Moorhead, Round County. An announcement was made today, or two, three days ago, of a partnership between the University of Kentucky and St. Clair Healthcare. There was 400 people in the room sisters in Notre Dame, and I found out a long time ago from representing that community in the Kentucky General Assembly, when the sisters in Notre Dame made their mind up to do something, you either got on the bus or you got run over, one or the other. 400 people in the room, UK healthcare, 
St. Clair Healthcare announced a partnership. And the blueprint of that partnership happened in another community I live in, King's Daughters Medical Center in Ashland, Kentucky, a hospital about to fold. UK King's Daughters today, the blueprint of that is now over 5,000 employees. The blueprint of that is two iconic buildings that used to be the Ashland Oil Headquarters in Ashland, Kentucky, that is now owned by UK King's Daughters Healthcare, full of people, parking lot full again. So, yes, it's about quality health care. It's about accessible health care. But what these announcements have done, outside of Lexington, in rural areas of this state that was built on the coal industry, the steel industry, and the railroad industry, parts of this state that helped build America. What it means for health care is unbelievable. But what it means for the economy and what it means for jobs is transformational and lifting up regions of this state that I believe was part of the responsibility of the University of Kentucky. Dr. Capluda, I want to give you, your board of trustees, everybody that works at this university to help beat down what some people say that this is the University of Lexington. This is the University of Kentucky. And you proved it this week, and you prove it every day, and we are proving it here again today to bring these colleges together of the expertise in research and development, to be able to put that practically, Nancy, under one roof. All of these specialties, all of this curriculum, all of this research and development. For this announcement of over $250 million to be invested on these grounds. But this investment on these grounds are going to vibrate all the way through the Commonwealth of Kentucky and beyond. I understand something about competing for federal dollars. I understand something about competing for and the addition to the unbelievable talent you already have on this campus, but the ability to compete to bring new talent. I am very honored to be living in the strongest economy of my lifetime. I'm very honored to see the largest announcements that's ever been made in the Commonwealth of Kentucky that has created thousands of jobs at the second highest wage ever known to Kentucky. I'm honored to know that we can tear down whatever the party affiliation is out from our name. And when it comes to investments like this and it comes to the economy and creating good jobs for our people, that we don't try to drive the state to the right or left, we try to move it forward. And I think we've proven that from the legislative branch where I served 33 years of my life to the executive branch. Yes, what do you hear in the media a lot? All the noise. But when you really get the chance to look at what's going on across Kentucky, from urban areas to rural areas, we are building an economy of the future. We're building a workforce of the future. And yes, Nancy, we're bringing the technologies of the future here to this great commonwealth to build a bright future for generations to come. Dr. Capilouto, Board of Trustees, everybody that works on this campus and beyond, we, Team Kentucky, look forward to working with you in the weeks and months ahead. We cannot allow this opportunity to slip away. We must capture it and lift up all parts of Kentucky to build that great economy that our people need and our people deserve. I am honored to be here today. Congratulations. Thank you so much for your always inspiring comments, Mr. Edkins. Um, next, I have the pleasure of bringing to the podium 
Senator Amanda Mays Bledsoe. She was first elected to represent Kentucky's 12th Senate District in 2022, but we got to know her as a member of the LFUCG uh, Council before that, and she is a longtime supporter of the work we do in Central Kentucky as well as across the state. She has been a champion of several projects important to our college and our commodity partners. And we want to thank her because her door is always open to ideas for advancing Kentucky's agriculture. Please help me welcome Senator Amanda Mays Bledsoe. Good morning. I leaned over and told Rocky it's not fair to follow him, ever. I'm wearing polka dots this morning pretending they're baseballs because this has been quite the week for UK, right? You know, as a mom of kids starting to look at universities, I don't have to tell you how important this is and this facility is to the future students of Kentucky. The General Assembly has prioritized financial responsibility so that we can make these significant investments to accelerate research, development, and economic growth. Strategic investment in university-led research puts our state on a positive trajectory. We've invested in significant health care and health research at the University of Kentucky because we know the quality of the people who do the work, and trust me, I've seen it firsthand. The same is true across this campus, and today we match that investment in a new research facility to propel our state's multi-billion dollar agricultural industry. And we see others investing as well. This new facility will be adjacent to the federal $65 million investment in the new USDA laboratory made possible by Leader McConnell. Multiple partners working together to create synergy and a capacity in UK's research. This college serves all parts of Kentucky, and in my central Kentucky district, that impact is evident. Since taking office, I've gone to participate in a number of, of groundbreakings and things like this, but I'll tell you, this one's pretty special to me. President Capilouto, Dean Cox, your leadership has set a firm path for Kentucky's future, and I'm just so proud to be a cheerleader. So congratulations on another successful investment. The next speaker will be Representative Suzanne Miles, another person who I feel like I've known ever since I came to Kentucky in 2001. She was first elected to represent the 7th House District in 2013. In her capacity as a state lawmaker and in a federal role in Congressman Guthrie's office, she is definitely a long-term time friend of the college. Being in and of agriculture as well, she knows personally the benefit of our research and the work we do to share discovery with the state through Cooperative Extension. Please help me welcome Chairwoman Suzanne Miles. It is a pleasure to be with you all today, and um, and it, and it is so happy. I'm very happy for the future for for Dean Cox, but I will definitely, definitely miss her like many of you all will. She has been a true friend to agriculture and to my family. Um, just kind of, I'm gonna shift gears a little bit and kind of get it back to agriculture and back to the, to the roots of things. I am a farmer starter. Row crop is what our background is, several of you all know. And it was always one of those deals growing up, my favorite part of the season was harvest time. Harvest time was the time that you reap the rewards of your work. But my father's favorite time was always planting season. And I didn't understand that. At that time, I felt like we're always busy in the field. Um, coincidentally, this year, three times in the field to, pr to, print, to plant based upon um, weather and mother nature. And we're very dependent on that with, with farming and appreciate that. But as you get older, you recognize the value of the seeds that you plant, the earth, the things that come from agriculture. Um, growing up, I would consider many farmers, including Eddie Melton and a few others in this room, we were kind of bootleggers when it came down to innovation. We have come such a long way with the University of Kentucky, Dr. Capolito and Dean Cox and many others prior of the work that took place prior to get to this point the technologies, everything that we do to feed more of our world 
on a daily basis. And so it's very uh, much an honor on behalf of the other members and colleagues I have here with the General Assembly, this investment in our future to not only feed the world, but the technology and everything that goes behind it to make this such a wonderful place for us to be. But also when we turn this dirt today, it's a little bit more sentimental to the others because of the soil that it comes from and the technologies and everything that comes about from facilities like this. The only thing I do ask is whenever they um, start building this building, they put a few tractors. We see the, the trucks and everything running around. If we can get a few uh, green and red tractors running around there, it would make us feel a little bit more home from the farm. So on behalf of the General Assembly, this investment is for not only Kentucky, but it is for the world. And so always keep that in mind. Everything that this university does, they do it in the global aspect of what can benefit the world and feed the world. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Chairwoman Miles, for the inspirational comments and the reminder of the soil that gives rise to all of what we do. Um, last, I will introduce Dr. Rebecca McCulley, who we have asked to describe and speak on behalf of all the researchers and faculty and staff that will be in the new building. Dr. McCulley is a renowned ecosystem ecologist and has worked for the past 18 years to understand how pastures respond to and help mitigate climate change and the implications for grazing systems. She has served as the chair of her department for six years. Prior to that, she was the director of the Institute for Sustainability and the Environment under the VP for Research on campus. Please help me welcome my good friend and a wonderful leader of the college, Dr. Rebecca McCulley. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> uh, just as Nancy uh, introduced me there, I was asked today to speak about some of the ways the new research building will impact myself and impact my faculty. Given that my office is just right over there, I think it was hard to know where to begin, and I'm probably one of those people that will need that drink. <laughs> <laughs> For myself, as a department chair, one of my responsibilities is recruiting new faculty members. Interviewing faculty members resemble prospective home buyers in that they are attracted to uncluttered, open, and bright spaces. I've learned that it's worth my effort to stage labs before interviews commence. If you have been in the Ag North lab spaces, you can appreciate the challenge I face therein. <laughs> the impact this new research building will have on our college's ability to recruit high quality faculty really cannot be overstated. <clears throat> All chairs with units slated to go into the new building are eager to show off the new, bright, state-of-the-art lab spaces we have designed over the past 10 months. And we believe it will greatly enhance our ability to attract and onboard talented researchers. So I think it's gonna make my job easier and more successful is what I'm saying. Now for my faculty. <clears throat> Despite experiencing less than ideal greenhouse and lab conditions for some time, faculty programs in Ag Science North and Garagas are scientifically productive and conduct world-class research. Moving into this new building will breathe new life into these programs and will substantially improve their working conditions and scientific capabilities. Faculty time previously lost on insurance claim, claims, equipment replacement, and disaster abatement can now be spent on writing new grants, mentoring trainees, creating novel ideas, and pursuing projects with potential to transform our state and beyond. Uniting under one roof, plant and soil, animal and insect research should stimulate transdisciplinary ideas and collaboration. Further, this growth in research capacity on campus is occurring in concert 
with infrastructure investments in our farms throughout the state. For example, the Princeton rebuild, the new workforce development building planned for Orrin Little, and the new land acquisitions at the North Farm. The new plant diagnostic and soil testing labs, one planned for here and one in Princeton, will enhance producer access to information they need to make informed decisions on their operations that directly improve agricultural sustainability and the environment. These investments will undoubtedly be synergistic and propel our research and impact to an unprecedented level. Not only will we have beautiful new buildings to be proud of, but we will be helping our faculty do what they do best, innovate and translate ideas into impact. I am truly delighted to witness the groundbreaking of this transformative new building for the college, and I thank everyone here who played a role in making it a reality. Thank you. You can see why Dr. McCulley is one of our great leaders in the college. If anything, she understated the number of disasters we may have dealt with in the past. Um, so thanks to all the speakers for being here. Thanks to the General Assembly for the support. Thanks to all the folks that are here today. All right. And give it a uh, moderate talk. <laughs>